Hello, my friend. Stay a while and listen. What's going on, guys? It's Filthy, and I'm back with another video. Today we're doing five awesome things about patch 267 and the PTR. So PTR's concluded now. It's been a really fun week. I'd say 80 to 90 percent of the stuff that I've got to say about the PTR is very positive, and only about 10 to 20 percent is uh, not so positive. But the 10 to 20 percent is pretty easily fixed. So we're going to go through five things that I think are absolutely awesome about this patch, uh, really, really exciting, and then one that's uh, a bit poor, but as I say, very easily fixed. So before we jump into it, welcome to anybody who's new to the channel. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already done so. And as always, guys, a thumbs up is always appreciated. So kicking things off with number one, I think the season theme is actually one of the best things about the patch. It's really, really nice. Now, initially, I leveled up a barb and I did this solo and I wasn't very fussed with the season theme. I found it personally quite difficult to keep the kill chains going. The move speed didn't seem to be particularly worth it. It was a bit of a struggle leveling. What I'd find is I'd see lots of lots of cyclones, lots of the early kill streaks, but trying to get it on to maybe 50 or 100 kills was a little bit more difficult. Now, I'll be honest, I was doing this solo and I did rifting just to try and get the extra legendaries. So if you went to, let's like, say, the Fields of Misery, then you might be able to level yourself using the season theme a lot better. But my initial impressions weren't that great. However, once I got to 70, once I started getting a build put together, once I started speed rifting, the season theme actually became really nice to play. Once you get used to chaining the three, four, 500 kills together, it is really nice. You do feel powerful. It's nice to have all the different effects go off. It's nice to see explosions of fire, meteors raining from the sky, angels fighting by your side, and all those types of things. And having jumped off season to play both on and off season on the PTR, the difference is noticeable. It's probably subtle because it you know it ranks up as you go through 1 to 70 and it's not really until you get proper builds together that you get the full benefit of the season theme I'd say. But jumping off season you do notice when it's not there. So I think it is going to be a fun season, it's a fun seasonal theme. There are obviously a couple of issues, the angels for the 500 kill streak will one shot everything. So I'm sure that will get nerfed because that's a bit ridiculous, it's uh, a bit nutty that that will kill the rift guardian doesn't bother me too much but uh, I think that probably will get changed Now, what I would say about the season theme is it's going to encourage people I think to pick classes that kill everything now that's really up my street I like kill everything build so I'm thinking whirlwind for the barbarian multi shot for demon hunter mages for the necro something like that something that wipes the whole screen wave of light for monk for example and I think builds like that will get the most out of the season theme now some of the builds single target ones in particular will probably struggle a little bit more so corpse lance or maybe necro thorns won't really be getting much of a benefit from the season theme so you know just bear that in mind when you're going to make your character next season something that kills everything is going to make it a lot easier now if you are grouping that will make it much easier to keep the bonus up whilst you're leveling it'll make it easier to keep it up in general so if you are a solo player then as i say a kill everything build and if you're grouping maybe it doesn't matter quite so much but all in all, really nice season theme, very excited for next season. So coming to number two, I think the next awesome thing about this patch is the Crusader set. Now, I think it probably does lack a little bit in damage. I've covered that in my build video, which I'll link in the description, but it still can do 75 in two and a half minutes. So it's not that terribly underpowered. It's, it's not amazing. But one thing that I can say is it looks absolutely stunning. It's a ton of fun to play. It's kind of like somewhere in between a Con Condemned Crusader and a Wave of Light Monk. It's kind of like, it's a bit spammy with the clicking, but the lightning on the screen looks amazing. And it's kind of not really close range build, not really a far range build. So yeah, definitely somewhere in the middle, but it's been an absolutely ton of fun to play. And I think with a few tweaks, this could be a really good addition to the game and a really nice set. One thing I would say is though having looked through the PTR boards, somebody has cleared I think a 105 on the season with only 900 Paragon. So there are ways to make this build function. So maybe it doesn't need as much of a kick as everybody thinks because it might just be that a weak PTR wasn't quite enough to get the most out of the build. But uh, yeah, let's hope it gets buffed and it's still, it's amazing to have a new set. It's amazing to have it look so visually cool and uh, really, really excited. I might pick say the next season depending on the changes for this. But it does look pretty cool so the next awesome thing we have is the barbarian whirlwind changes 
Now, I've put this in at number three because I'm slightly worried that this will get nerfed because it is very, very powerful. Now, it's really easy to put together. It's very easy to play, but it just feels absolutely lovely. It's, um, it's tough, it's tanky, it deals loads of damage. It's really mobile. It's absolutely great for bounties, great for speed drifting, really strong for pushing. You know, somebody I think has cleared 140 on the off-season leaderboards and the projection is, is that it's going to do a little bit higher than that if it goes to live just simply because of the season theme and the way that the uh, angels work and the power increase works but it is really nice to see spin to win back it's uh, it's a classic build it's you know it's had its heyday from previous Diablo games and it's also been a pretty good build in Diablo 3 for a while but it has kind of dropped off it's um, not as popular as it was so it is really nice to see it back it's a build that I really enjoy it's a play style that I do enjoy as well obviously it fits my uh, whole ethos in life which is filthy casual and easy peasy so it's uh, yeah it's pretty awesome and I would highly recommend checking this out on season once the patch goes live so the next awesome thing is the rest of the barbarian changes because obviously everybody concentrated on whirlwind on the PTR which is fair enough because it was so strong and very easy to put together but we've got some really really cool changes as well it looks like the slam barb is back so there's been changes to seismic slam buffing up the attack speed the damage the number of enemies hit and you can now speed farm with seismic slam very well Lord Fluffy's done a really good guide on that you will be able to push pretty far with this it used to be able to do kind of around about 100 110 without terribly much bother and I think we're gonna get it going a little bit further that's something I'm gonna test once the patch goes live because unfortunately I didn't get much chance to do that myself we also have buffs to Hammer of the Ancients so IK and Legacy of Dreams Hota have both been buffed and the really nice thing about this is that the buff doesn't extend to Raycor Hota so we've got pretty much three really nice push options for Barb you're gonna have Whirlwind you have Seismic Slam and Hammer of the Ancients and that's in addition to Leap Quake and also in addition to Raycor so it is really nice the fact that we're going to have so many different options for Barb so if you do pick Barb next season you can have a ton of variety to push you're not going to be restricted to just simply Whirlwind albeit the player base may gravitate towards that but there are options there you, know, you can pick and choose and even if Whirlwind does catch a small nerf then you still have these other options and it's really cool to have legendary items buffed in the game and it just uh, gives Barb a bit of a new lease of life which is nice to see because Barb has pretty much been lacking since the Rogue season not many players have been picking Barb not much has changed and you know, power wise it probably has been towards the back of the queue so really great to see Barb back in its full force so the final change guys it's uh, this is a small one but I still think it is pretty awesome and this is the Legacy of Dreams drop rate. Now, leveling a character 170 on the PTR, the Legacy of Dreams gem dropped for me number two, so it was the second gem that I got out. I think this is really cool because, fair enough, if you're a meta player, you're gonna go for the season journey, you're gonna want to pick a really strong class to start with and level yourself up very quickly. But if you are a more casual player or you're just doing it for the giggles, the shits and giggles, then it may be worthwhile or maybe more of interest to you to simply get the Legacy Dreams gem and go from there. So for example, if I do pick Seda next season, I'm kind of tempted to just pick this gem up really early and maybe go for Blast Shield or something like that and just gear around what the game drops me, uh, which is fun. That's kind of like what I like doing. It is, it is nice to build your character slowly and at least you get an option and also it will really help you out getting your season journey done so if you do get this gem straight away then depending on your class and the two piece and the four piece bonus you might not even put those pieces on until you get the full six piece so again i think this is a really nice change getting this gem early does help us all out quite a lot and it's very nice for anyone who wants to have a bit more of a chill non-meta experience so yeah another good change from blizzard so that's the five awesome things now I did say there's one thing that was not so awesome, but it is easily fixable and I'm sure no great surprise, this is going to be the new Monk set, the Patterns of Justice. So again guys, I've discussed this set in a bit of detail in one of my previous videos, so I'll link that in the description as well. Now what I would say is the transmog looks really cool, I think the concept behind the set is fine, I think it is quite interesting. A move speed heavy set where you can just run around and the enemies get kind of burnt down by your sweeping wind vortex that sounds really cool again lazy build up my street fast move speed up my street 
so really behind the concept of this but unfortunately it just kind of falls quite flat so without going too deep in this i think basically it's got three problems all of which are pretty significant so the first off there's no damage reduction in the set this means that you get absolutely hammered at gr75 and if you think about it, it let's say you compare this to either inarius for the necro well, that's got an inbuilt 75% damage reduction if you take a certain amulet. You, know, you need high damage reduction if you can have a close range build. Explosive Blast Wizard, again, that's got an 80% damage reduction with the correct offhand. Whirlwind, any barb has got 80% damage reduction with the Band of Might. So really having a close range monk build is very, very hard to actually keep alive, particularly with problem number two, which is the damage output. So if you can't kill stuff quickly enough, you're going to take a lot of incoming damage. You can't really avoid all of it if you're doing a melee build. And the lack of damage really does highlight the lack of toughness. Because if you're not killing things really quickly, then essentially what you're doing is, is just getting absolutely bashed in the face repeatedly. So kill speed, damage and damage reduction are all problems. But even on top of that, we've got another problem which is resource management. The idea behind the set is you're supposed to use Tempest Rush to increase your sweeping wind size but unfortunately because this is a thirsty skill you can't just hold it down the whole time you have to do things in your build to mitigate against the resource cost reduction and that's a real pain because it means you're taking items, stats and skills away from mobility, utility or damage. Now you can't even use the Crimson set with uh, the way the build works at the moment because the belt doesn't have a cubable multiplier on it so your belt slots locked out so there's no way to get crimsons in which again is a little bit of a problem now the pleasing thing is is obviously it is a new set to the game and it is cool to have these things and i think it's probably fairly easily fixable we just need a damage reduction of 50 percent on the two piece we probably need some damage reduction on the four piece maybe 60 or 70 percent and then we need a probably three or four times damage increase so just stick another multiplier either on a helm, a weapon, or up the set damage or the ventral wind damage. So it's not that hard to fix, but realistically, it feels to me like this set is kind of designed for T13. And if we still were playing on T13, it would be fine. You would obviously have much quicker builds, but it would at least be able to get the job done. But for T16, it just doesn't really cut it. So unfortunately, that's probably the only negative cut of the PTR, which is probably the disappointment of the monk set. But as I say, it's easily fixable, so fingers crossed, the Patterns of Justice will get a significant buff and it will be somewhat playable when we get round to the season. So that's it guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you enjoyed the PTR, let me know what it was that you liked about it. Leave me a thumbs up if you have enjoyed the video and I will see you soon. Peace.